All right. After listening to that awesome intro, I bet you're wondering, is this a video game podcast or is this an Italian DJ thing going on here? Well, I'm your host, Joe Amadeo, and this is the Italian Gamer, and this is the Italian Gamer podcast. I bet you're all wondering what's going on. This is my first episode, and I'm really excited to be able to share it. Every week, I'm going to be talking about some Nintendo news, um, news about video games in general, and I might have a guest star, I might have a review. Um, I'm really excited to be able to share this content and week to week um, be able to get the opportunity to share and have others share as well. This is also part of a Discord community. It's the Italian Gamer. You can feel free to look it up. Another big thing that I want to do with my podcast is host tournaments. So if you are interested in joining um, the Discord channel, let me know a game that you enjoy. And I might actually hold like little tournaments where I will um, get my get like a fifteen dollar Nintendo eShop card or PlayStation or something. And if depending on who wants to make it, we can actually um, have a great time just playing and having fun. So uh, this is pretty much the gist of the Italian Gamer podcast. So let's just go on into the main news week of things. This week, let's see what's what's exciting, what's new in video games. Well, let's see. Um, some of the things that I thought was really cool with news in video games was the announcement of Pokemon Snap. The Pokemon Snap came out in 1999. That is a long time ago. And I just can't believe how much time it's been since we've seen an actual legit Pokemon Snap game. I mean, 1999. I was four years old. <laughs> Five, actually. Um, I remember playing it on my Nintendo 64, and it was just some crazy experience. It was fun. I barely even knew what was going on. I didn't even know how to read. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to see the announcement of Pokemon Snap and the trailer was amazing. It's the graphics look great. I can't wait to be able to play that. It's it looks like such a fun game. I'm not sure if there's a release date yet. I think it was slated for April. Um, I am on the Nintendo website right now, and I think they said April. The game boasts uh, the game is supposed to be $60 for the suggested retail price. April 30th is the release date. And I'm excited. I'm curious to see what features they'll bring. If it's going to be a multiplayer experience online, um, I honestly have no idea. But it looks like multiple generations of Pokemon are going to be in the, in the loop. Um, I see Grookey from Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I'm really excited to see um, what we have to offer or what we have what we have offered to us this time around for Pokemon. Um, anyway, let's see. What else is new in the world of video game news? Um, Nintendo just finished holding their Splatoon 2 event. Um, so if you, for those of you not familiar with Splatoon 2, um, they would hold events. And basically, last week, they just finished their Mushroom vs. Star event. And Nintendo doesn't. Nintendo stopped doing these events, so it's really surprising that they offered this. It was Friday the fifteenth through Sunday the seventeenth. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure who won, but it was really cool seeing that they actually gave out an event like this. And I, yeah, it's just it's awesome that Nintendo is still supporting Splatoon two. Um, Splatoon two came out back in 2017 when the Switch was still brand new and i'm really quite shocked to be honest that they haven't released a sequel yet or a third game um you know there's been they've been slating around the possibility of a, a nintendo switch pro so who knows maybe a switch pro will come out and we'll see splatoon 3 on the switch pro um i really don't know the next set of news for nintendo switch is the trailer for um super mario 3d world browser's fury um, what makes that experience look so cool is that the game looks identical to Super Mario Odyssey. Um, I think one of the cool experiences with it in the trailer of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is that they introduced this giant world and they have baby Bowser next to you riding around and he has a paintbrush 
and as you're as Mario is running around through the levels, uh, baby baby Bowser can like help you in your environment by solving puzzles or by interacting with different pieces of your environment. And it's such a cool experience. I'm very excited to see what else we have in store for us in the Bowser's Fury DLC. Um, the game is slated to come out in February, and I believe the price is also going to be $60. Um, yeah, one of the cool, th- and then one of the other cool things I thought about Mario uh, Bowser's Fury is the way they are portraying this like giant, like you know, heavy rock Bowser that's like huge, and he's a giant. And I'm really curious to know what Baby Bowser, um, maybe the Baby Bowser's role is in this game, and why he's working with Mario. I'm curious to know like what that whole storyline is going to be. Um, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury is going to be for us and it looks like a fantastic game i really can't wait but yeah as far as nintendo news goes um that is pretty much the gist of it we had pokemon snap um new trailer we had the bowser's theory trailer and then just a few other things um, for those of you that have maybe haven't been around for Nintendo news in a while, um, just some, some indie games came out, which were really fun. Um, Among Us is a game that's been around forever on PC, on multiple consoles, and finally it got a Nintendo Switch release. And I gotta say, Among Us on the Switch plays really well. It's fantastic. It runs very well. Um, another indie game that came out that was originally on Apple Arcade is called Grindstone. And um, that game also is really fun. Think of it like a bejeweled kind of experience, but it's an RPG and you're basically trying to slay monsters um, as part of like a job. It's really fun. It's really cool. It's, it's a game. It's one of those games that you're probably not expecting that you would love, but you end up playing it and you're like, oh my God, this is really cool. Um, Super Meat Boy got a sequel. Um, there's a lot of cool indie games on the Switch, and there's so many hidden gems that if you just take a second to browse through the Nintendo eShop, it's ridiculous how many uh, indie game titles you will find. I am still in shock by how many great indie titles that I've discovered during the time that I've played my Switch. But yeah, so that's pretty much what's in the news for Nintendo. Um... Uh, next, depending on like week to week, if it's any other news, I might do like more PC news or I might do more like uh, Switch news. So I'll probably get a read from the audience and then I'll see like what other news I could update with. But yeah, that's pretty much what's going on for the news week. Now we're going to move over to the playlist. What have I been playing this week? Um, this week, I've been playing a combination of games. Um, the first game I've been playing a lot of which is kind of an oldie, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Um, I made it to the final boss, and what really sucks about the final boss is that you have to do two different forms, and then finally, when you get to that last form, uh, not only do you control one character, you control two characters. So you have to move the analog stick, and it'll move both characters. And you have to use the walls to your advantage in order to make the game work. Um... It's a really cool experience, and I think what what makes it kind of frustrating is that you're given this experience at the end of the game, and you're not given prior training. So the only way to get better at it is to go to the main menu, go to the boss battle area where you can practice boss battles, and basically just practice it as much as possible. And it's such a departure from the main game that you you really have to practice. And if you die, it sucks because... If you die in the in the actual main game, you have to go all the way back to the beginning again and beat all three levels, plus the first battle, plus the second boss battle. So they really made it a true roguelike experience, and it's really interesting to see how they did that. Um, another game I've been playing a lot of, which is just always on my playlist, is Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is a really cool experience. It's one of those games that has always been a huge... Um, game on the switch and nintendo just finished their new year's event in animal crossing it's a really fun game um one of the best experiences with animal crossing is that it's one of those games where it doesn't really matter how much time it takes between opening the game up you could open it up and it's always a new experience it's always something fun 
and it's a really just overall awesome experience. Um, another game that I'm playing um, that I've been playing a lot lately. Honestly, it's a lot of my games have been Switch related. I um, Final Fantasy. I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VIII. Um, one of my um, my one of my um, games that I have is Final Fantasy VIII, and um, one of the I, the game is infamously known for its battle system and how complicated it is. Um, it's something called a junction system, and I'm not going to go too much into detail about what it is because I I can't even describe it myself. But what makes it so interesting is that you're constantly junctioning like summons to your characters and then those summons are what power up your character it's really weird and at certain parts of the story you have to do something called junction exchanges where you have to move certain summons to other characters and for a game that came out like in the early 90s it it was very convoluted for its time but it was also a very intricate great system and i'm really happy with like how they did it it just you just have to learn it though um but yeah, overall, I think it's a great system. I think um, it just takes a lot to learn. And the storyline is really fun. Um, I think Final Fantasy VIII is one of the um, underrated Final Fantasy games. And I really am enjoying it a lot. You basically play as a student um, who happens to be a member of this organization that's um, kind of like a military-based organization. And they study summons, which they, they actually study the junction system. So like. It's, it's a system in the game as part of the gameplay, but it's also a system within the storyline. And um, what ends up happening is, is that uh, you graduate from this school, but um, you kind of still go there. You still go to the school. You're just graduating from student to having a full-time job as like a, like a secret agent at, at this school. And you'll go on like missions that have to be accomplished. And some of the missions start off pretty simple, like go kill this. But then they upgrade to like, oh, we're going to do this assassination. It's really crazy. And it gets really intense. Um, There's like different plots going on. There's a lot of drama. Uh, The characters are really cool. Um, Overall, it was a really fun Final Fantasy game. Um, It definitely does not get as much uh, credit that it deserves. (laughs) But um, overall, fantastic game. Um, But yeah, other than that, those are the three uh, main games that I've been playing this week. And I'm really excited to be able to continue playing them and maybe give more updates. Um, I will definitely have transitions next week in between each section of my show. So right now I'm kind of just going through this all in one go as fast as I can just to have a really awesome first episode. But next week, I promise I will have transitions. It'll be a really awesome, uh, really awesome audible audio experience. Um, the next thing I want to talk about uh, now that we're done with the playlist is the game dev. Um, I'm using my podcast as a way to also talk about my game development for a video game that I'm making called My Vacation Pixel Paradise. Uh, this is a game that is going to be a Sims-like first-person experience. It'll be available for mobile devices uh, as well as PC and maybe even Nintendo Switch if I figure out um, who to work with for this. But uh, basically, the main experience is that you are starting a new life on a tropical island. Um, This tropical island is filled with with characters uh, similar to Animal Crossing, where they're animals. And you get to befriend them. Uh, You have your own place that you can decorate. And um, you can get, like, jobs. And you can make money. Um, You can get, like, you can level up yourself. Um, You can get to know other characters. It's very much a chill experience. And... um, I'm targeting the game to people that love Animal Crossing, people that love um, different experiences like that. Um, For me personally, um, anxiety is something that I struggle with. And I think for me, this is not just a game that I'm making for fun. It's also one of those experiences that I'm hoping that can help calm anxiety for people or maybe calm like depression, something that can people can go to and be in this happy world where they can explore and have fun and really get into the, really get to know these animal characters and just have a good time. So that's pretty much my experience with my game and just a little background. Um, right now, I'm working with an artist and a composer, and I'm really excited because um, these people are doing a great job, and they are. They have, I can see so much heart and soul in the work they're doing, and um, we have a we have a character that's already made, and we have their emotions all set. 
as far as environments go, the first few environments are completely done. Um, I'm a programmer, so on my end, it's a matter of just programming all of the individual systems. Right now, I'm programming the exploration system, and I'm trying to get it to work for both touch devices and for uh, controllers, So, and like, like, like a mouse and keyboard. Um, I'm really excited. And this has been a really humbling, fun experience for me. It gives me the opportunity to take my mind off the stress of life when I'm working on my game. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's been a great experience, and I can't wait to be able to share the world of my vacation, Pixel Paradise, one day. It's it it, it makes me so excited and so happy. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the that's pretty much the uh, end of that section for my game dev. Um, usually, um, if I'm uh, if I have a guest on the show or if I have someone that wants to like talk as well, I might give them the opportunity to talk about like what games they're playing, or I might give them the opportunity to uh, talk about some news that they thought was interesting this week. So if you're listening on the show and you're, or you're listening after the fact, uh, come join the Italian gamer discord and let me know if you'd like to guest star on a show. Let me know if you'd like to speak up or if you'd like to uh, talk about something that you're enjoying this week. Um, I would love to have guests anytime. Um, I'm also at some point might be even opening a Patreon for just for to support the show. All proceeds will go to probably the tournaments that we'll be hosting um, or just general like server stuff for discord. Um, I'm really excited though, to be sharing that as well. Um, if you missed the show tonight, I will also be uploading the show to YouTube and you can watch the YouTube version of the show as well. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be able to start this podcast again. It'll be every Friday night, uh, sometime between 7 and 9 p.m., uh, depend- if one time permits. Uh, the YouTube video will be posted afterwards. And um, this podcast was also available on anchor.fm. So if you have um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, whatever podcast device you can listen on, um, just look for The Italian Gamer and you'll see my podcasts. Um, so it should be pretty, um, pretty easy to find. Don't forget to join the discord. Um, the one last thing that I want to do, um, for this, for every week is to leave the show on a very positive note. And, um, I think that it'd be cool to spread more positivity out there. You know, we're, we live in a world with, it was still the pandemic. We still have a lot of negativity going around and I think it'd be really cool to have more, positivity. So whoever does end up joining the show, uh, come up with a really cool positive quote or a really cool positive thing to say um, to end the show. Uh, Something to think about between week to week. Um, I think a lot of us out there are struggling with anxiety or struggling with um, the negativity around us. And we could all use maybe something positive or something great to hear. Um, So the one that I came up with um, is something that I think that maybe um, you yourself or anybody else listening could probably say to yourselves. And the, the quote is when anxious thoughts come to me, I acknowledge them and let them float on by. I'll say it one more time. When anxious thoughts come to me, I acknowledge them and then let them float on by. I think this is a really cool quote because a lot of us have a tendency to not let them float on by. We grab these anxious thoughts and we kind of sit around with them and it makes, and it kind of drives us crazy. Um, so I think that this is a great quote because letting your anxious thoughts float on by, like imagine a river and imagine all of these thoughts just running rampantly through it. Um, just imagine those thoughts going away and just try to think of something new and positive to replace them. It's a really cool, like mind practice experiment you can do. Um, it's, I find it, I find it really funny that when I do have anxiety and I do let these thoughts float on by, I end up forgetting why I was anxious in the first place. And it's so cool and such a great experience. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my positive quote for the week. Um, other than that, this is that's pretty much the end of the show. It's this this podcast is meant to be just a really fun experience for anyone listening, and I'm excited to be able to share this uh, week to week with people. Once again, if you are interested, please let me know on the Discord. We we can ha- you can be on the show next week. Um, Once again, my name is Joe Amadeo, and I'm the host of the Italian Gamer Podcast. Um, I will be also um, 
sharing my screen if I'm playing games on Steam. So if you are in the Discord and you see me on my gaming channel, you can feel free to hop on in and watch me play a game. Uh, we can play games together. I will be hosting tournaments. I will also be hosting like multiplayer games. If anyone ever wants to play anything on Switch or PC, uh, please just give me, just please let me know. Um, I'm, really, I'm really excited to grow this community. Right now, we only have about 13, uh, 17 people total. So I'm hoping that this community will continue to grow and that we'll have some really awesome um, community involvement as well. Um, if you have any friends, please share the podcast with them. Let them join. Um, and if they want to, if they want to say something or talk as well, please let them know to let me know, and they can join as well. Um, anyway, this is once again, this is Joe Amadeo. This is the Italian Gamer Podcast, and I hope you all have a great evening.